Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this conference is to bring to your notice and through you to the notice of the world a statement signed by eight of the most eminent scientists in fields cognate nuclear warfare about the perils that are involved in nuclear warfare and the absolute necessity, therefore, of avoiding war. I will just read you a brief abstract here, which I think you already have. The accompanying statement, which has been signed by some of the most eminent scientific authorities in different parts of the world, deals with the perils of a nuclear war. It makes it clear that neither side can hope for victory in such a war and that there is a very real danger of the extermination of the human race by dust and rain from radioactive clouds. It suggests that neither the public nor the governments of the world are adequately aware of the danger. It points out that an agreed prohibition of nuclear weapons, while it might be useful in lessening tension, would not afford a solution, since such weapons would certainly be manufactured and used in a great war in spite of previous agreements to the contrary. The only hope for mankind is the avoidance of war. To call for a way of thinking which shall make such avoidance possible is the purpose of this statement. The first move came as a collaboration between Einstein and myself. Einstein's signature was given in the last week of his life. Since his death, I have approached men of scientific competence, both in the East and in the West, for political disagreements should not influence men of science in estimating what is probable. But some of those approached have not yet replied. I am bringing the warning pronounced by the signatories to the notice of all the powerful governments of the world in the earnest hope that they may agree to allow their citizens to survive. <coughs> now, I should like to say just a little about the genesis of this statement. Uh, I think it was an outcome of a broadcast which I gave on the 23rd of December last year on the BBC uh, on the peril of nuclear war. I had appreciative letters from various people, among others from Professor Joliot Curie, the uh, eminent French man of science. And I was particularly pleased at getting an appreciative letter from him because of his being a noted communist. I thought that uh, one of the purposes that I had in view was to build a bridge between people of opposing political opinions. That is to say, to unite men of science on a statement of facts uh, which could leave out altogether what people thought in the matter of uh, politics. <coughs> I wrote to uh, Einstein suggesting that eminent men of science should do something dramatic about nuclear war. And uh, I got a reply from him saying that he agreed with every word. I uh, therefore drew up a draft after consultation with a certain number of people, which I sent to Einstein. And uh, he, being already not in very good health, suggested, I quote his own phrase, that I should regard myself as dictator of the enterprise, because I think chiefly because his health was not equal to doing it. 
<coughs> when I sent him the draft, he replied, I am gladly willing to sign your excellent statement. I received this letter on the very day of his death and after I had received news of his death. So that this was, I suppose, about the very last public act of his life. <coughs> the aims of drawing up the statement were to keep to what men of science as such can pronounce upon, to avoid politics, and thus to get signatures both from the right and from the left. Science ought to be impartial, and I thought that one could get a body of agreement among men of differing politics on the importance of avoiding nuclear war. And I think that in that respect, this document is fairly successful. <coughs> there are, uh, apart from myself, eight signatories of this document, and all the eight are exceedingly eminent in the scientific world, most of them nuclear physicists, some in a field which is very important in this connection, geneticists, and uh, men who know about mutations caused by radiation, a very important subject which arises when you're considering nuclear warfare. But uh, they were chosen solely and only for their scientific eminence and with no other view. <coughs> I applied to 18, I think, altogether, and of these, half, or nearly half, and eight, in fact, agree. <coughs> there, uh, some I, I haven't yet heard from for various reasons. Uh, in particular, I applied to the most eminent of Chinese physicists, Dr. Li Si Quan, and I haven't yet had his answer. Uh, none of the answers that I received were unsympathetic. Uh, those who did not sign had various good reasons, such as that they had official positions or were engaged in some official work, which made it difficult. But uh, nobody, uh, either of the right or of the left, uh, uh, replied in a manner that was unsympathetic. <coughs> I uh, had one signature from Professor Infeld of the University of Warsaw, who was joint author with Einstein of two books. I had a, not a signature, but a very sympathetic letter from Skobelzin of Moscow. Monsieur Jolio Curie is, uh, well, in the first place, as one can infer from his name, he's the son-in-law of the discoverer of radium. But, uh, he doesn't depend on that for his fame. He's a Nobel Prize winner. Six of the eight have got the Nobel Prize for work of a scientific character, and the other two, I think, probably will get the Nobel Prize before very long. That's the, the order of eminence of these men. <coughs> Monsieur Joliot Curie, made two reservations, which, uh, one of which was of some importance, the other not so important. Uh, I spoke of the necessity for limitations of sovereignty, and uh, he wants it added that these limitations are to be agreed by all and in the interests of all. And uh, that is a, a, a statement that I entirely agree to. <coughs> Then there's another re limitation that he made. I say, shall we put an end to the human race or shall mankind renounce war? And uh, he wants to say, shall mankind renounce war as a means of settling differences between states? Uh, with those limitations, he's agreed to sign the document. <coughs> 
Professor Muller also made a very small reservation that uh, seemed to me only to be explaining what I had meant. <coughs> I'll say just a few words about these men, some of whom possibly are not so well known in the journalistic world as they are in the scientific world. They consist of two British scientists, two Americans, Einstein himself, whom I don't reckon among Americans because Einstein's nationality is somewhat universal. <coughs> one Pole, one Frenchman and one Japanese. The <coughs> Professor Rupert, I'm very happy to have here. He is, as you know, Director of Research in Nuclear Physics in uh, Liverpool. He uh, did a very interesting piece of what you might almost call detective work about the bikini bomb. Uh, those of you who are old enough may possibly remember that in 1945 people were quite shocked by the atom bomb. Uh, well, uh, that seems now ancient history and we think of the atom bomb as something like bows and arrows. Uh, we advanced on from that to the, uh, the H-bomb which was uh, very much worse than the atom bomb. And then it turned out, uh, first I think through the detective work of Professor Rothblatt and afterwards by the admission of the American authorities, that the bomb that was exploded at Bikini was very much worse than an H-bomb. Uh, H-bomb now is ancient history. You have uh, a two-fold trigger arrangement. You have first uranium-235 to set off the hydrogen, then you have the hydrogen to set off uranium-238, of which there are vast slag heaps that have been discarded in producing uranium-235. And uh, now that you can use uranium-238 for the purpose, it's very much cheaper to make these bombs, and they're very much more destructive when they're made. So that, uh, you see, science advances quite rapidly. Uh, so far, the bikini bomb is the latest thing, but uh, we can't tell where we're going to come to. <coughs> I think that uh, this statement, as I conceive it, is only a first step. Uh, it uh, will be necessary to go on to get the men of science to make authoritative <coughs> pronouncements on the facts, and I think that should be followed by an international congress of men of science from uh, all scientific countries, at which the signatories would, I hope, propose some such resolution as I have suggested at the end of this statement and uh, I think uh, a resolution in some of those terms could be suggested at uh, the various uh, partial congresses that take place meanwhile. I think that the men of science should make the public and the governments of the world aware of the facts by means of a widespread popular campaign you know, it's a very difficult thing to get men of science to embark on popular campaigns. They, they're not used to that sort of work, and it doesn't come readily to them. But it is their duty, I think, at this time, to make the public aware of things. They have to persuade the world to avoid war. <coughs> at first, by whatever expedients may suggest themselves, but uh, ultimately by some international machinery that shall make the avoidance of war not a matter of day-to-day -day expedience, but of world organization. And I think they should uh, emphasize that science, which has come to have a rather sinister meaning in the minds of the general public, I think, that science, if once this question of war were out of the way, 
is capable of conferring the most enormous benefits upon mankind and uh, of making the world a very much happier place than it has ever been before. I think they should emphasize that as well as the uh, dangers that arise through war. Now, I'm uh, here to answer uh, questions, and uh, I should be very happy to do my best to answer any questions that any of you may wish to ask.